This video is brought to you by Skillshare. How's it going, Spare Parts Army? I'm your full-time average infantryman and part-time cosplayer, Chris Cappy, and today's episode is all about the recent changes that the US Army has quietly been making to this standard M4 rifle. The original prototype version of this thing was made by Colt just two years after the creation of the M16 in 1966. Since then, over 500,000 of these things have been miracled into existence, and it's been adopted by over 60 different countries around the world. But according to a 2006 CNA survey, of 2,600 soldiers who were returning from combat in Iraq and Afghanistan, 20% claimed that their weapon jammed in the middle of combat, which is like the military equivalent of saying, I swear this never happens to me. It's a major controversial debate. I'm sure you're familiar with it. So why does the US Army use this weapon if it has such mixed reviews? Does it have to do with a strange outdated contract mistake that gave Colt sole rights to produce this thing with a very lucrative weapons deal? Here's one thing that's for sure. Since 2001, Colt Firearms has fought in as many legal battles as the M4 has fought battles in real life. They've been trying to defend their licensing rights and attempting to keep their status as sole manufacturers, but that status has slowly been eroded over the years. Okay, so here's a weird question for you. When the US Army switched all of their infantrymen over from using the M16 to using the M4, did that basically work out to the exact same thing as switching to a whole new weapon? Is your Honda Civic the same as your Honda Sedan? These are deep philosophical questions that we're wrestling with here people in all seriousness the question is important because if the m16 and the m4 are different weapons then switching between them means that the army should have held a competition and let other vendors offer better solutions so was that switch illegal should we arrest the u.s army i don't know all i'm saying is swapping m16s for millions of dollars worth of m4s was a backdoor primary weapon switch it's a good question that we're going to explore in this video you see with this new m4a1 modernization effort that's been going on since 2016 we've seen the m4's capabilities expand beyond what we originally thought it could do but more on that later in this video we're going to examine and what makes the upgraded M4A1 different. We're gonna look at the controversy with the Colt firearms production, where the M4 even came from, and at the end of the video, we're gonna find out why I can't hit a non-moving target at 25 meters directly in front of me. I swear it was the wind in the indoor range. So how did this whole boondoggle begin? Well, the M4 began its journey during the Vietnam War, where its prototype was called the XM-177 Colt Commando, giving a new meaning to going commando. Special Forces teams wanted something more compact, Colt engineer Rob Roy designed the XM117 to use a 10-inch barrel which is half the size of the 20-inch M16A1 barrels of the day. Rob Roy used a novel flash suppressor on the Commando that was four inches long, bringing the overall length of the barrel to 14 inches. This immediately makes my head spin when I hear this because the whole point of this new version, this more compact one, was to be as small as possible. So why would you add a four inch long flash suppressor that barely made the flash and sound less. There are different theories. Some people say it helped as a counterbalance weight. Others say it made the weapons report sound more like an enemy's AK-47. And there's a theory that the only way the army would certify the gun in the first place was with a flash piece because otherwise it would be too dang loud. Maybe it's a combination of those reasons. You have to remember, this is the 1960s and the military is still experimenting with different muzzle brakes and flash hiders. This military solution likely didn't do much for the army because today they stick with better suppressor technologies instead. For this reason, and it makes me think it was probably one of those things that happened in government military projects where there's a hard black and white requirement for the weapon to have something that mitigates its sound to a certain level. So the design team is like, okay, great, we can do that, but it'll be ridiculous, this four inch long flash hider, thinking that the army would never be stupid enough to go for it. Then some four star general looks at it and says, I love it. Make 10,000 of those ridiculous flash hiders so I can put my mark on this project. Jokes aside, the flash hider was noted as really bringing the audible level down from thanks I can't hear anymore to what'd you say? The Colt Commando was a hit in Vietnam with the SF types, but it is still made in very limited numbers. Rob Roy, the designer of the weapon, gave it this beautiful telescoping tubular aluminum buttstock so you could choose how long you wanted the rifle to be. But it was more than just slight adjustments like that. In 1994, the United States Armed Forces, they made the decision to go ahead and replace the M16 with what Colt was calling the XM4 at the time. Even though its accuracy, range, were all negatively affected. On the other hand, its compact size was seen as a bigger advantage overall. Oh, and its short barrel meant that it couldn't handle long sustained periods of fire. So that was questionable. And that would come back to bite them in the 
you know what later on, but we'll see that in a minute. Remember to fire off a burst into that like and subscribe button. We put out a new episode every Tuesday and Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern, so rally on me on those times, huh? So the problem with the weapon's performance and the problem with the controversy over Colt's licensing starts here. Since the original 1990s order for the M4, there was only a very limited amount that were ordered at the time, and it wasn't really a big deal that Colt got sole source status in the contract on the gun. It turned very few heads at the time, and it was really only supposed to be a replacement for the MP5 submachine gun. Since then, a ton has obviously changed, and the Army has been ordering a massive amount of M4s to make it their primary weapon over the M16. This started to really kind of bother some people because that means there's no firearms that are competing within our primary weapon. And that probably wouldn't have been an issue if the gun wasn't jamming all the time and misfiring. Without competition, does Colt really have a reason to innovate? The US Army only began issuing the M4 carbine as recently as 1999, right before the global wars, which were mostly in sandy desert locations, not conducive to a high maintenance rifle. The M4 rifle is such a diva. Shortening the M16 to the M4 wasn't as simple as just swapping out a shorter barrel. Like a lot of people think, it's more sophisticated than that. With the short barrel, this meant that the gas port had to be shortened and moved down as well, which doesn't sound like much, but the M4 is cycled by that gas impingement system. This means messing with the length of the tube that sends the gas through the gun messes with the performance. Quit messing with my performance, can I get an unironic hua? The result is that you increase the weapon's pressure from the M16's 10,000 PSI to now having an M4 with 17,000 PSI, and this causes more malfunctions. It also has the side effect of shortening the weapon's life down to about 6,000 rounds, which is where all of these issues, problems, and complaints against the M4 really have its roots. The M4 came with a Picatinny rail system, and it's largely seen as the beginning of that grand tradition of modularity that we so rightfully worship to this very day. It was called the Mill STD 1913 rail, and it was developed right at Picatinny Arsenal in New Jersey, where a lot of new military technology is workshop. When most people think of New Jersey, they think of the Jersey Shore, but when I think of New Jersey, I think of Picatinny Arsenal. I just thought of an amazing collaboration opportunity between those two. It looked like everything was going amazing for the M4. It could do no wrong. It was a famous celebrity, and everyone wanted a piece of the M4. Then an incident happened in 2000. 2008, which has since tarnished its record. An unusual firefight occurred in the mountains of Wanat, Afghanistan. A platoon of US Army infantry were surrounded by hundreds of enemy. They fired so many rounds through their M4s during that combat that reports stated the weapon barrel started to overheat to the point of melting and warping. Those problems that were caused by shortening the M4's gas system were starting to rear its ugly head when the weapon was really put through the paces. This prompted an official US Army investigation into the M4, which revealed many shortcomings that had kind of been swept under the rug and ignored until now. At the same time, the military was just beginning to realize that they might have to consider the possibility of a near-peer war with China or Russia in the near future, and their weapons wouldn't really be able to be strained and pushed to the, its capability limits if that were the case. Before we find out about the modern day M4A1 and the controversy around Colt's license to the weapon, I wanna tell you about this video's sponsor, Skillshare. I joined Skillshare because I was looking for a way to improve my understanding of business and entrepreneurship. It's an area where I felt like I could really use some personal growth this year. By the end of the class, I walked away with a stronger understanding of how to launch my own business. I recommend the premium Skillshare membership. It's what I have, and it gives you access to literally all of the classes on the site. It's really the perfect opportunity for someone interested in learning how to start their own side hustle this year to earn extra money. Our viewers get to explore the Skillshare class library completely free for one month by using our link. The reason I found Skillshare to be so valuable was because it allows me to discover new skills in a variety of different topics so I could discover classes in video editing, or creative writing, areas where I need improvement. Click the link in the video description to try it out. You've got nothing to lose. The first 1,000 people to use our link get one month of Skillshare for free. So support the channel and invest in your personal success today. So there's obviously a running theme here that troops like the weapon but find it difficult to maintain. It works well for the US Army because places that we've been to deployed to for the past few years allow for regular maintenance. But what if soldiers of the future are far away from supplies for long periods of time? Do you wanna know what your average supplies are in the military? A box of Q-tips? 
and you just go to town on the star, it's called the star chamber. And I used to go through just about six of these boxes per day. And you just try to get all the grime and filth out of there. And if you really wanna know what being deployed to Iraq is like, it's like a lot of Q-tip. This is the weapon I carried in Iraq for most of my tour, and it definitely has its share of pros and cons. So I wanted to see what this new M4A1 full send version was capable of with all of its changes. Does it really make a difference? I gotta admit, I was skeptical. I was allowed out into public for a very limited amount of time so that I could test fire the new upgraded M4A1 version at the Heritage Guild in Pennsylvania. I'd always been taught that we didn't need the full send mode because it wastes too much ammo. As if there's such a thing, I scoff at that. The old M4 that I used in 2008 only had a single fire or three round burst, which is like giving a rifle training wheels. After getting out to try the new and improved M4A1, I realized that I'd been living a lie. I was deep in denial. I told myself I was okay with single fire. Not true. I'm nothing without that mag dump capability. How dare the US Army rob me of that experience? Weighing 7.7 .7 pounds when fully loaded with 5.56 millimeter rounds, the M4A1 has a high rate of fire at 900 rounds per minute. I felt that down in my plums. Muzzle velocity is 910 meters per second with the new M1885A1 ammunition, which is a steel core new type of ammo that just recently came out. It has a max effective range of 500 meters, but the bullet's effect on target is actually best and most effective up to 400 meters. That's according to Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey K. Woods, who worked on the M4's new M1AA5A1 ammo type. All I know is after trying it out, I think being able to go full send with an M4A1 should be a God-given right bestowed upon every service member in red, white, and blue. So what's happening with this new M4A1 modernization program within the US Army? It's fascinating to me because they're planning to extend this thing's service life into 2040 and beyond potentially. But not everyone thinks using a 100-year-old weapon would be a good thing. If the M4 was a dead horse, we'd be beating it by now. Now you might be thinking, what about the next generation squad weapon program? Isn't the army working on replacing the 5.56 millimeter with the larger 6.8 millimeter. Okay, so I think the Department of Defense is actually hedging their bets a little bit here by investing around $500 million in changes that will keep the M4 relevant just in case that whole NGSW program falls through. Yes, they're investing 500 million in the M4 as part of their reasoning for that is because they don't wanna spend 1 billion to replace the thing. That's the sunk cost fallacy at work if I've ever seen it. It's our tendency to follow through with something if we've invested time and money into it whether the current costs outweigh the benefits or not. Truly, it seems like this is as close as the Army's ever gotten to being sentimental over a piece of equipment. To me, we're at a point where the question becomes, what's the acceptable tolerance for your average infantryman's weapon? What is the reasonable level of quality that we can develop the M4 to reach before it becomes too cost prohibitive. To the military's credit, they began investing money in fixing the problems with the M4 right away. The new primary infantry M4 is called the M4A1. Colt has been swapping out the fire control group to replace the three round burst with the full send mode. Ambidextrous controls have been added so it's no longer prejudice against the lefty community. If you were unhappy with the already great trigger on the M4, the A1 version has a new one with a more consistent pull. But more importantly, it has a heavier barrel to handle more heat so that the 2008 Wana Afghanistan incident will not happen again, not in that way. At the same time, the military was requesting up to $375 million worth of M4 rifles, which journalists were starting to notice. The claim here was that the large spend basically was the same as switching to an entirely new weapon without any competition and without even looking into what other options might be available. Personally, I can understand the army feeling like that wasn't a major weapon swap, but more like a tweak since the two guns share so much in common, like 85% parts are shared in common. Soldiersystems.net wrote some fascinating articles tracking the major improvements that are still being squeezed out of the M4 today. So the military found that by switching to a mid-length gas system, it halved the amount of malfunctions from 65 down to 30. And it actually doubled the weapon's life expectancy. So you could put 12,000 rounds through the weapon's barrel before having accuracy issues instead of the old 6,000. Oddly enough, it was the Air Force Security Forces center evaluations who were at the forefront of investigating some of these changes. The Air Force improved the M4A1 into what's called the Improved Modular Rifle Blue. Yes, we just have the word modular in a weapon. It has my vote. Uh, do it. Let's do it. 
I love it already. According to SoldierSystems.net, they believe that these improvements can extend the M4's service life to at least 2040. I'm assuming that that's barring any major developments in laser rifle technologies. Okay, that's all well and good, but what about all that controversy you've been hearing about with Colt firearms manufacturing and their weird proprietary license? So this has been up for debate for a while now where some people feel like Colt has had the full domain over the M4 for too long and others, namely Colt, felt that they're getting ripped off by other companies who use their design and they use the name of the M4, which their argument is that that's false advertising, that that name should be associated with Colt only. So in July 2009, the sole license timeline ended for Colt. So this news meant that the US Army had acquired the design rights to the M4 carbine. Since then, Remington won the award in 2012, but Colt filed a lawsuit trying to block that contract. And they tried to hold on for dear life to those sweet M4 dollars. The lawsuit was dismissed and the contract for 77 million was moved to FN Herstal to produce over 100,000 M4A1s. If you ask me, Colt having that sole proprietor status for so long was actually a bad thing for their company. They rested on their laurels and they didn't really innovate as much because they had no reason to. Since they were on easy street, they were all set with their big US Army M16 and M4 contracts. Since 2015, Colt has actually filed for bankruptcy, but I wouldn't count them out entirely, not just yet, they could still make a late game comeback. And it's not like they aren't still making buckets of these weapons for the US military, it's just that now they have to share the pie. Remember to grab your one month free premium membership to Skillshare, now is the time to learn how to do that thing you've always wanted to do. I'm your regular old infantryman, Chris Cappy. Thank you for watching Spare Parts Army. It really means a lot to me. Please comment below. Let me know what your thoughts are on the M4. Did you like using it? Does it still have room for improvement after all these years? Imagine if you're still using it in 2040. Remember, we're posting new videos every Tuesday and Thursday at 12 p.m. So rally on me at those times. Can I get an unironic koa?